And the question is to find the Norton equivalent of this network. Take this one, replace that with up, oh, not a voltage, Norton equivalent, replace that with what? A current source, I Norton, in parallel with an impedance I'll call Z Norton. It said they wanted a resistor and capacitor. Well, we'll see what the value is, what Zn is. If it ends up being 2 minus 3J, so you know it's a resistor and a capacitor. You know? You're looking for the Norton equivalent. Since you, bo you have both dependent and independent sources, to find Z Norton, which is really the same as Z Thevenin, it is V open circuit over I short circuit. And I Norton is I short circuit. Since I short circuit in both of these, maybe I'll find that first. Let's put a wire right here and see what that current is. That's I short circuit. Now remember the capacitor is 1 over J omega C. Omega is 1. Or so the capacitor is 1 over J omega C, which is negative J over omega C. Since omega is 1 and C is 1, that's a negative J. The inductor Notice I'm doing boxes even. Inductor is what? J omega L. Omega is 1, L is 2. That's 2J. Two so omega is always in per second. Yes. And now, here's my short circuit. You're going to put a wire here. And what is that current? That's your I short circuit. Now we can solve this problem. There's only one unknown in it. We can find the voltage. Once I know the voltage, I know what that current. I can do KCL. I know the voltage up here. That's one angle zero. I don't know what the voltage. I will call it V. So if I define current going in and leaving, doesn't really matter which direction. That's I short circuit. It's the same current because it's going that way you get this current I sub 2. So I can say the current going in, KCL says, the current going to node 1, or V here, which is I1, equals the current leaving that node, which is I short circuit, plus I sub 2. Now, I can write I sub 1 in terms of the voltages. I sub 1 is 1 angle 0, which happens to be, by the way, 1. 1 angle 0 is just 1. Minus the voltage divided by negative J. This minus that over this value. I short circuit is the current coming down, which is this minus 0. This voltage here is 0. So it's V minus 0 over 2J. plus I sub 2, which is what? V minus 0 over 0.25. And VL was the voltage on the top. That was VL right here. Well, if this is ground and this is V, what is VL in relation to V? It's V. It's the same thing. And that's the only equation we have. So you treat the current source, dependent source, like a resistor? This one? Just the current source. Yeah, but how come that... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's not V minus, it's 0.25. Oh, I fell asleep here. 
Where is it? Where's my eraser? I fell asleep here. This is 0.25. It's a current source. It's not a resistor. It's 0.25 VL and VL happens to be V. And now I just got to clean that. Now, how do we clean it? Well, that negative J in the bottom, bring it to the, uh, the top, becomes a plus J. J times 1 minus V. That becomes a negative J. So negative 0.5 J times V plus 0.25 V. J times 1 is 1 J minus 1 J V equals negative 0.5 JV plus 0.25 V. Move this one to this side, that becomes a plus. It's 0.25 plus 0.5 J times V. Can we find what uh, V is? 1 J over 0.25 plus 0.5 J. Is it going to be 1.5 J? That's a minus. When this one comes to this side, it becomes a plus, right? Okay. So that's why it's plus. So now let's see what that value is. There's my calculator here. Let's see if I remember oh, how to do this one on this calculator. 1J, 1I, divided by... 0.25 plus 0.5 I. And I have V equals what? 1.788. About 1 1.8. Angle 26.6. I'm trying to find I short circuit, not V. Well, if I know I short circuit, can I find V? I short circuit is this current. So I short circuit, it's this voltage V minus zero over 2J, which is 1.8 angle 26.6, .6, divide that by 2J. And my answer is 0.89 angle negative 63.4. Now I need to find V open circuit. V open circuit. So let's find V open circuit. There's my circuit again. That means this is open. So you're going to have one angle zero right here. We said this is negative J. This is a current source of 0.25 VL. This is an inductor with the value of what? 2J. And right there, what is the V open circuit? This is VL, by the way. Well, how much current going through that one? Zero. Zero. Open circuit. Right? So what's the voltage drop here? Nothing. Nothing. So this now has a value of zero here. So your circuit will look like this. This has a value of zero. 
means nothing going through it. And this not even here. This current is zero. So what is this current? Zero. That's also zero. All the current entering this node should equal the current leaving that node. So right here is one angle zero, the voltage. There is no drop here because there is no current going through it. What's the voltage right here? One angle zero. One angle zero. So what's my V open circuit? One angle zero. What's my Z Thevenin or Z Norton's? The same as Z Thevenin. We're looking for the Norton equivalent. V open circuit over I short circuit. What's my V open circuit? One angle zero. What's my I short circuit? Point eight nine angle negative sixty three point four. If you push all the right button, Z Norton will be what? 1 divided by 0 0.89, 1.12, angle 63.4. Actually, it won't be a capacitor. It looks like an inductor. Unless the negative capacitor. You know, because if you change this to rectangular, that's 1.12 cosine 63.4 plus J 1.12 sine 63.4 times the cosine of 63.4. That's 0 0.5 plus J, 1.12 times sine 63.4. I forgot to check to see if I'm, in. that's one. Since W is one, that's a positive one, that's an inductor, J omega L. So L must be one, so really what the equivalent value is It's a resistor of 0.5 with an inductor of 1J. I, I should draw them. Norton equivalent, right? With the current source what was the value? The current source 0.89. That's I Norton, or the Norton equivalent. I just converted yep. the, uh, the number we got into rectangular. I thought you were supposed to just use like a box. You could, but if you want to know what the equivalents are, right. you could use a box. But if you want to know what's in the box, so this is 0.89. So is the imaginary portion always, that's the... That's either capacitor or inductor. If it's positive, it's an inductor. If it's negative, it's a capacitor. So this is like 0.5 plus 1J. Or if you want to change it to polar, you can. But now you know this is a positive. Remember, the inductor J omega L, it's positive. The capacitor, negative J over omega C. So if this is a negative value, you have a capacitor. If it's a plus, you have an inductor. You have a resistor and an inductor for that one. And it says in the problem, could be a capacitor or an inductor. They're not telling you what till you do the math. Could you make it a, a capacitor that's... The only way to make that J a capacitor if you have a negative value for C. And this is not something you will discuss uh, in this class or the next one. So do we keep the negative and look for the capacitor? 
It doesn't say use a capacitor, it's inductor or a capacitor for yeah, that well, one. It was a capacitor. You it, was it really capacitor. can't be in this class. We don't deal with negative capacitors. So they shouldn't say capacitor. So it didn't say capacitor. It says inductor or a capacitor. You have to look at it and determine here. Okay. But if they said it has to be a capacitor, then for this to be a positive and you want to use a capacitor, that means that capacitor will have to have a negative value. What does that mean to us? We won't touch that here. Not in the first two years in college. Maybe not even in the first three years. You know, that doesn't mean you won't see it. You will see some problems with negative capacitors. Is that a lot more right than it does? Hmm? Yeah. yeah, we got all of it right, actually. We just went about it differently. That's fine. Any other ones? Any other questions? You know what? While well, I got the camera running, I'll put another one. When I was walking here, I tried to like look and find a problem that looks like oh, it could be a nightmare in terms of the math. And I'll draw it here. Nobody, I think, including me, likes superposition. There's, I see a big problem with superposition here. I really do. I'm looking at the clock. I don't know if I can do it in that length of time. You know what? I'll just do a different one. Yep. There we go. Yeah, because otherwise I got to do the problem. And I'll, I'll put another dependent source. I'll start from the top. Plus minus. 0 0.005 I sub 1 it's not in phasor yet so lowercase 2 milli henry capacitor here of 750 microfarad Another voltage source of six cosine two T minus thirteen down here we have one ohm. I just want to pick a problem that has like a few things in it. There's the capacitor of 1,000 microfarad. Why not just write one millifarad? I'm not sure. Makes feel better, I'm sorry. Yep, I'll go one millifarad instead of 1,000 micro. Another voltage source here. of 6 cosine, here's the good news, 2t. My frequencies are what? My w is the same. If w is the same, I don't have to use superposition. If this was 2t and that's 3t, then you're stuck using superposition. And you know when you're doing superposition, that means you can do the problem two or three times. It depends how many sources you have there. And that's the rest of the problem. Let's pick something. What do you want to find? Voltage, current, what is it? Voltage. You want to find the voltage? Okay. The voltage where? Here? Okay. So, you guys want to find the voltage, or what should we call it? Vx? So here's the question, find Vx, assuming the bottom is the ground. And it's really up to you what method to use. I'll be out of my mind 
not to use nodal analysis. Oh, where's I sub 1? I sub 1 is actually not the current down this way. When I looked at the book, I took this problem from the book. They define I sub 1 here, I sub 2, and I sub 3, and they want you to find all three currents. That was the question there. If I do that, then I got to use what? KVL. If I'm looking for VX, I know the voltage here is zero. I know the vo if I go to phasor, this is six angle what? Six angle zero. Zero. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I can tell you what I sub one is. I don't need it, but I can tell you what that is. Yeah. Let me change it to phasor. Now, W is 2, so the capacitor is what? Oh, God. Are these in milli, max? Let's see. Use the phasor analysis. It's going to be small values. Okay. Let's see. So capacitor is what? Negative J over omega C. My omega is 2 here. So let's see what that capacitor is going to be. Negative J, omega C, 1 divided by parentheses, omega, which is 2 times 750. Where is EE on this one? EXP, negative 6. If I push the right button, that's roughly what? Negative 667J. Did you get that number? Verify these numbers. I'm the worst person on calculators. And this is 6 angle negative 13. Just doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't like this because this is 1. And look how big that number is. I keep looking to see if there's a K somewhere. Like a thousand next to that, but I don't see it. Well, the resistor is fine being small because that's the real number of the other ones. I know, but like usually, like your numbers, like they don't give you just one and this. It's going to be a problem yeah. with the two uh, uh, millihenry, though. Well, let's see. That's going to be like. The inductor is J omega L. Notice how small that one. 2 milli times 2, 4 milli. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's going to be. You got a 4 milli. This capacitor, one millifarad. So negative one over omega C. Omega is two. And C is what? One EXP negative three. 500 J. And this value here will be what? Six angle zero. This is I one if you're looking for it. And believe it or not, we know what I sub one is. Why? What's the voltage here? If this is ground, what's this voltage here? Six. Six or six angle zero. What's the voltage here? Six. What's this voltage here from this source? Six. Here. Six angle what? Negative 13. What do you think the voltage here? 
6 angle negative 13, you know I sub 1. Angle. It's this voltage minus that voltage. 0 0.005 I sub 1, that's the difference in voltage, is equal to 6 angle negative 13 minus 6. What is I sub 1? They're not looking for it, but if you need it, you're done with it. You have it. The equation looked really ugly first. But now it's like, oh, that's not bad. 6 angle negative 13 uh, 13 backspace, where's the backspace? Uh, I have an answer. You have an answer? I want to know how you delete this one now. Oh, wait. I'm looking to see if there's backspace to delete. Oh, delete. Got you. What'd you get, Eli? Uh, 272 angle negative 96.5. I didn't get that one. I got that. Good. What'd you get? I got oh, for I sub 1? Yeah. Oh, I was looking for the difference between them. Oh. Yeah, divided by 0 0.005. What'd you get? Uh, 272. Yes. Uh, 272 angle, negative 96.5, right? Yep. yep. So if I need I sub 1, I got it. But since my question was, what's Vx? Who cares about I sub 1? Well, well, if you need it. I don't need it. So if I define current here, I1, I2, I, I can make them any direction we want to. I3. I'll make them all go in, no reason. They're going to attack I sub 4. So let's do KCL of that node. All the current entering that node should equal to 0. What is going to that node? I sub 1 plus I sub 2 plus I sub 3 plus I sub 4 equals to 0. What is I sub 1? That's this current, so that's this voltage minus that. 6 angle negative 13 minus, we call that Vx, right, the center? Yep. Divided by next, uh, negative 6, 6, 7j. Plus I sub 2, that's this one. 6 minus Vx over point zero zero four j bless you plus i sub three six minus vx over negative five hundred j and the last one is zero minus vx over one equals zero how many unknowns in that equation? One. What I might do here, just to make my life easy, go one over that number in polar. One divided by, in polar, I mean, I'll switch it to polar, negative six, six, seven J. That's gonna change it to a polar number. That'd be roughly 1.5, 10 to the minus three. What's that point zero zero one five? Angle ninety times six. Go ahead. What's one over point zero zero four J? Uh, one divided by point zero zero four. J, I'm going to start doing it. This is 250, angle negative 90, times 6 minus Vx. This will be a plus, the next one. 1 divided by negative 500J. Point zero zero two angle ninety times six minus Vx 
minus vx equals zero. Good question. Um, yes. <coughs> does it matter where you put the negative sign? What do you mean? What negative sign? Because for I two, you put just um, negative sign in the angle, negative ninety. Could you just put it in front of the two fifty? Subtract. Nope, that's a one eighty phase shift. The minus sign is 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. So you can't move the minus sign, put it here. Unless you have to make that a plus 90. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because the phase shift of 180 degrees, yeah. That's what that is. So now you distribute that one. And let's have fun with that. 0.0015, ang uh, I got to put them in parentheses, 0 0.0015 angle 90. I forgot where that angle, stupid angle went. Where'd you go? Uh, oh, I see it. 90 times 6 angle negative 13. So when you distribute that, you're going to have point zero zero nine angle 77 minus 0 0.0015 angle 90 VX plus what's 6 times 250? 1500 angle negative 90 minus 250 angle negative 90 VX plus six times point zero zero two point zero one two angle ninety vx minus point zero zero two angle ninety vx minus the vx equals to zero let's collect all the like terms The one without the VX in them. There should be no VX here, right? That does not have VX here. You distribute in that. Notice we did this times that to get this number, then this times that to get this one. This times that to get this number, this times that to get this one. This times that to get this number, this times that to get this number, and there's the minus VX. Let's collect like terms. Point zero zero nine angle seventy seven. Add to it fifteen hundred angle negative ninety. Add to it. It's barely a change. Zero one two change from what? Fifteen hundred. Yep. Almost fifteen hundred angle what? Negative nine, yep. Because remember that's a big number. You're adding this is almost zeros to it. There's nothing in the real part. You're adding vector. This is what's happening. You get a vector like this. Huge vector in this direction. And you get a tiny vector like this in this direction. Well, how do you find the equivalent? Remember you make parallelogram? In math and your result is that one so lengthwise almost the same length and the angle is almost the same that's what's happening so you add a small tiny number not even one this is the and the well they're all almost in the imaginary where is it yep this is 90 this is 90 negative 90 so actually one of them is like this the other one is tiny one this way the other one is tiny one that way big deal so that's why your number is so big there. Let's look at the other ones. And again, the other one's not going to make much of a difference. It's going to be almost negative 250, negative 90J. Then there's the minus 1. Huh? I have an answer. For all four of them? Uh, yeah. What do you have there? Uh, 249. Plus 249. And then angle 90.229. We'll go 90.2 VX equals 0. 
Move that number there. Wait, how is it a positive VX if it's minus 250? Because the minus is going to make this plus 90 degrees. That's a phase shift of 180 degrees. Oh, okay. So if you add 180, that becomes a 90. So Eli said he got that number. I trust him with his calculator there. 249, this one equals negative 1500, negative 90. What is VX? Oh, I forgot parentheses, negative 1500 angle, negative 90, divided by 249 angle, thank goodness for these calculators, 90.2. I got a math error. Oh, I forgot to close the, no, I did close. What'd you get for an answer? 179.8? Yes. I got 0 0.229 as an angle. Negative 0.229. The angle? Yeah, as the angle. I got 6 as the uh, angle. Well, 1500 divided by 249. Let's see why it gave me syntax error. That's fine. That looks good, actually. Exit. Delete, delete. Maybe I put the wrong minus sign. Minus, uh, oh no. Minus 90, was it? Yep. Divided by yeah, two. Same thing Eli got. Error? Uh, no, 6.02 angle, negative point two. Six point zero angle, negative? Point two. Point, just point two? Yeah. With a negative value? Yeah. Okay. okay. This is what's bugging me. I typed that number. It tells me a syntax error. And the, there's the parentheses to close it. 79.8 plus 0 .2, No, I mean, just do the math. I'm asking the calculator to do the math here. It tells me that's no, I'm, I'm saying my math error. calculators, I think, in a different base for polar oh, than theirs. Hmm. So that's what VX is equal to. Maybe. If the question was find VX, we got it. Yeah.